Most of this video is not going to be talking, there's just going to be a piece of music that plays. And I'm going to do a little bit of shameless promotion of my basic chromatic harmony program because this whole piece was written with chromatic harmony. And when you learn chromatic harmony to an extent to where it sounds very seamless throughout an entire piece, and I'm going to explain this in a second, then you know you've really mastered chromatic harmony and it's going to cross over into anything you do. And when I think about this for a second, I'm reminded of a guitar player called Steve Morse. Um, what I liked about him growing up, and he, even though he was a, a generation behind me, I liked listening to it because it was just so different from what all the other guitar players were pretty much doing. He wasn't trying to be mainstream and whatnot, but anyway, he would do these classical-like sounding pieces. And I say like because oftentimes he would use something like mixolydian, which you're not going to find in something like Baroque music, even though his, his uh, pieces were similar to the Baroque style. Well, at least many of them were. So it's more of an emulation. And, but what I want to point out is that he created things that were seamless, even though there was modulations, different modes and whatnot. It was very seamlessly connected, meaning well composed yet not following the rules of that time period. Kind of like Prokofiev's uh, classical symphony. So the point of this video is I made this piano duet intentionally to sound like it came us from a specific era, the Romantic era. It's a piano duet, but I'm not exactly following the same kind of things they would follow. For instance, the most obvious thing, starting in one key and then ending in a totally different key, not even related, A minor, G minor. Also, a lot of A, B sections that are actually contrasting in keys. Um, and a common thing to do if you're in minor would be to the, go to the relative major for a B section or something. Something similar to that. That would be very common. Or go to the key of the dominant. But instead, I chose to, rant, to do a, quite a bit of sneakiness in there. By using chromatic harmony, this entire piece uses a whole ton of chromatic harmony, but it's intentionally not following the same rules. But or I should say stylistic trends. So that's the whole point. If you could seamlessly move in between keys without the listener even really noticing that something dramatic has shifted, then you're actually on your way to using chromatic harmony successfully. So that's what I try to teach you in my chromatic harmony course is how to do that in key first. And if you do that in key, then it's going to be much easier to do that with a lot of chromatic wandering and a lot of uh, unrelated keys. So I'm just going to hit play. This is just an advertisement for our chromatic harmony course. I sorry about that, but so just go ahead and give it a listen. It's a piano duet. I exported the MIDI file out of Dorico and just hitting play. <laughs> 